right, great to be great to be back again with Tyron Daniel, leader of NCMI, uh, New Covenant Ministries International Apostolic Team. We had a chance to chat the other day through just some of the ins and outs of uh, base church, what that looks like, and one of the things we touched on, which I think would be helpful to, to hear you out uh, even more on, is this thing of having a team guy in. You know, we hear that statement, and sometimes they're listed as a guest speaker or these sorts of things, and I think it would be very helpful. I know when I led, it's nice to have the clarity as to what that looks like. So maybe the first question in there is, who should you have in? You know, what, what would be a benefit to the church? Great, good question. Nice to see you guys again. Look, from my side again, if I always can start saying these things by saying these things, is that there's not one 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 way to do it all. You know, there's different cultures, different contexts, different churches, different relationships, different partnerships. And so, what we're trying to do here is more give some ideas and maybe understand some of the the heart of what we do. But you've got to find what works for you. So this isn't the way; it's another way. But I do think it makes sense if we understand what we're trying to accomplish and what we're trying to do. And so it's a great question. To, again, we've seen guys do this really well. And we've seen other guys do it unhelpfully. And I think we're all trying to get better at this. And that's yeah. 40 years in. We're still learning our way and trying to find out how to do things better. But I think there is a way. There's, there's definitely an intentionality we can do and, and pursue that will make it a more effective thing. And, and that's probably what this is about. Hosting a guy or a team person or a gift. Yeah. It, it probably kind of, I'd rather call it teaming with the translocal because when you're working together, it's not we come in and do something, it's we're actually on the same team working together to fulfill uh, the mandate we've been given, but also to make the trip and the, 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 the visit far more effective than just another speaker yeah. or a person in. So, with that, you know, the thing of choosing the right gift and the timing, the fivefold, uh, is there a timing to which is best to bring a certain gift in? Again, a big question and with a big answer, but I do want to just say it's actually up to the elders of that local church to, I believe, hear God for the season mm, they're in. Yeah. Um, it's great to get perspective from one of us, perhaps, in who we would suggest, but I, as part of governing the local church is knowing what gifts we need in the mm. local church for the season, not necessarily that we're just in, Yeah. because a lot of guys are in reaction, but if, you, if you've been led by the Spirit in Revelation, it's where we're headed and what we need for our future what needs to be laid into the foundation. So it's not just reading the now, it's reading where we're headed to. That's and so good. I do encourage leaders and elders certainly to be hearing God for who they get in, what gift they need. And then again, like you said, you know, most of us will choose the gifts we like because we are those gifts. <laughs> yeah. That's just how the human nature, and that's what it is. Like we get like, we all hang with the gift we like. And so, unfortunately, the downside of that is we always get in the same gift, the same person, the same. And I think we've got to think outside. There's five gifts given by Christ for the church. And we need all five. And we need to read the season of where we're in, not what we like. What's God saying? What's God doing? What's going to add to what we're doing rather than what's just going to confirm what we're doing? And so, it's, a, it's hard to answer this is how. Yeah. But I do believe you've got to be praying, seeking counsel. Making sure you get in the gift that's going to help uh, be what God's called you to be in your season. And also understand, we can bring gifts, like uh, we bring something to the church that does confirm what you're saying, but in a different way. And that gives people the ability to say, yeah, it's not just our leadership, God's speaking to us. And that's a lot of what this translocal team does is confirm the things God's already saying, which really gives the leaders credibility in the church, which is helpful. Um, in saying that also, Chris, I think it's important that you can be whatever you're trying to be to your local church. But elders, generally, if you're honest, you ask your people, they will see you as a pastor or an elder yeah. in the church. And so it's not who we claim to be, it's how people receive us. Sure. So even if you, let's say, carry a gift of evangelism, and maybe you're in Ephesians 4 evangelist leading a local church outside of your church, in other congregations and churches, you're seen as an evangelist, but your people see you as their pastor, as a pastor, which is great, but therefore you do need to get evangelists in to release some of that gifting in your local church. So I don't want to just say get all the gifts that are not like you, get your similar gift too, because people can't receive you as that gift. That's right. They will receive the gift coming in as the gift. And that's important because a lot of guys say, well, we got the five in our church, we don't need anyone else, which sounds awesome. Yeah. I wish that was true. But actually, you need these gifts to be translocal coming in. Right. And if you do have all five, with all due respect, you should be sending 
those gifts out yeah. to go and help the other churches and be received. And so, again, be careful how you go about this. But I do want to just come back to say, hearing God, if you're not able to do that or you need a backup perspective, call one of the team guys and just say, hey, we feel like we need this kind of person, this gifting. Do you have a suggestion? And I think the more you build relationally with this team, the more you can pick for yourself who you see those guys are or those people are. And so you can begin to kind of build with that team and pick and choose as you need for the future God has. So in saying that, I also think I wouldn't have someone in more than three or four times a year. And I'm mm. not saying the same person. I'm saying all gifts. Now, again, okay. it, it's different when you plant, when you plant a local church and when it's new, if different seasons, and I, I understand that. But I wouldn't have more than three or four a year. That, that's mm. my person. Certainly by invitation and strategy. If guys are in town or someone's in town and they're around and they are... They're available to preach. That's different. But I'm saying when you're being strategic about choosing these gifts and how many you get in, if you're serious about them leaving a deposit and helping you in the foundation laying and becoming who you're supposed to be and in maturing, you can't have too much of that because then you become guest speakers. Right. But when you have someone in who three or four times a year and you have different gifts, then you want to build around that and you want to implement and you want to unpack what's been taught. And, mm. and so that's why I think more than three or four times, probably a little too much okay. in being strategic. But have the gifts in when they're around. But don't just have a new guy in every week. I mean, this is not a guest speaker by any means. <laughs> we want to be builders, not blessers. And that's kind of how this thing works.